Hello everyone and welcome for another video of Love and War Games. In this video we will talk about the latest Alliance starter set for Dystopian Wars and since it is a uh, a starter set for new players, I thought we would not do a classical what to build video, but we would actually uh, make it more like a how to start the faction, how to start the Latin Alliance, so that newer players or older players that would like to start this faction can see uh, more in one video uh, how it plays. If you want a deep dive analysis on the Orbat, like every single unit that is available, every combo, every weapon, uh, I have uh, released our an Orbat deep dive a few days ago, so feel free to have a look. But here, this video will be more dedicated to newer players. We will have a look at every aspect of the faction, who they are in the fluff, what is their playstyle, and of course we'll talk about what is inside the starter set, what units uh, you can build and what we recommend, as well as some list examples, and to finish, some ideas about expansions. Uh, if you really like the Latin Alliance and you don't know what to build after, we'll explore uh, what are some of the best options that you have. So who are they in the fluff? Who is the Latin Alliance? Well, as the name might suggest, they are all the Latin countries of Europe. So France, Italy, Spain and Portugal, as well as some communist countries in South America, because in the fluff Karl Marx went there, and it is now the South American Socialist Union, this territory here in orange. Uh, what can be said about them is that they are in this dystopian wars fluff uh, some smaller powers uh, because yeah france is not uh, a major power in the 19th century of dystopian wars unlike it was in the real world uh, as you can see a lot of the colonial empires of many of these nations are absent like <laughs> like they don't exist simply and uh, thus they are much weaker than they were in the real life uh, as, as such, they decided to bend together to form this alliance so they could uh, face the larger powers such as the British Empire, for example, who is even stronger than it was in real life, or for example this absolutely massive uh, Imperium, which is composed of most of Central and Northern Europe, and which is a very militaristic uh, force. And to fight off against all these invaders and the Union that we can see here, of course, they decided that uh, like there is strength in numbers. And this is a very important part of the Alliance that will reflect on their playstyle. There are different countries, sometimes very different countries, that decide to uh, cooperate between each other as best they can, so they can survive the onslaught of uh, other, sometimes more monolithic nations. Also, they are quite democratic, which is uh, relatively rare in the setting, and they are led by a prince president, which is uh, Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, which is kind of the same as uh, the, the Louis Napoleon Bonaparte that was in the real life, except this one is friend with some enlightened uh, personalities, and thus he has access to some quite esoteric uh, technologies. There is, for example, a Promethean complex here in the Mont Saint-Michel, and this is where, for example, the Levant generators were first invented, as well as the heat lances, which are a very important part of the Alliance Arsenal. And how do they play? Well, as we said, they are a composition of uh, different nations, and thus each nation is quite different from the other. They all play amongst the Alliance, and you can absolutely on the table in your list have a little bit of French, a little bit of Italian, a little bit of everything. Um, but they complement uh, each other really well. For example, the French ships are quite potent, they deal a lot of damage for their points, but they are quite fragile, as we will see. The Italians, or the South Americans, uh, have uh, not this problem, they are much, much more resilient, even though they don't have the raw damage output uh, of the French, but they are more made to hold the center. And the Spanish, which are not released uh, yet, but uh, we hope to see them soon, they are much more focused on air power, with galleons that are just floating around like the Zeppelins, like the, the concept art is uh, amazing, but yeah. And the Portuguese, they man the stations and all the buildings that are made on the sea. Uh, that sounds a bit stereotypical, maybe it is, but yeah, all the naval stations of the Alliance are manned by the Portuguese Navy. One thing that is very important, apart from the fact that each nation 
uh, is very uh, distinct in its flavor is that they have some extremely powerful weapons. The Heat Lance and the Heat Lancets are some of the most efficient weapons in the game. It's those that you can see right here on the picture. And they just melt uh, any ship that gets close. If you arrive at closing range, uh, it starts to be quite, uh, quite potent. And at point blank, they are, I think, the best weapon of the game. Apart from this, uh, these weapons, the Alliance recently got a new rule which is really decisive in how they play, which is the coordinated support rule, which means that they can uh, link their weapons much, much better than other nations. And since they have a lot of different uh, weapons on their ships, they have, for example, a big heat lance turret, they have some small torpedoes, uh, some smaller gun batteries, etc. It used to be a weakness of the Alliance, but no, they made this a strength, and just as their fluff would let you think, they are really good at making different pieces work together for greater whole. So yeah, they are really the nation if you want to have a lot of different things with a lot of flavor, all working together for one goal. And so what do you actually get inside this Alliance starter set? It costs 60 pound and inside you get all these ships. And the first thing I will say is that you only get French ships. Uh, the Italians are coming very soon. The South Americans are already in pre-order. But if you buy just the starter set, you will only get French ships. As you can see, you get some surface ships, which is the bulk of the fleet here. Uh, you get some submarines and you also get some skimming units, which are these ships that just go on the edge of the water. They are not really aerial units. You get all of those. First, you get the Oriflamme Grand Battle Cruiser, which is this large ship here. It is the only ship of the box in resin. You can either be build it as the like classic uh, Oriflamme, which you can customize, or you can choose one of the two named variants that can not be customized, the Fesh or the Richelieu. We'll see them in details later. You also get two frontline cruisers that you can build as Chevalier or Charlemagne, which are the two turrets versions, or the Loire or the Picardie, which are the two uh, single turrets version. You also get these four adorable Ecuyère frigates, uh, great, great units, don't underestimate them, they are they have very good uh, utility. You get two Levant cruisers, which are these flying ones, and you get two submarines here. You also get some SRS token, two of them to be exact, uh, because uh, these flying ships that you can see here can be built as an aircraft carrier. You also get, since it is a starter set, or everything that you need to play uh, by yourself. Like you need to find an opponent, but you do get uh, all the dices. You get the rule book up to date. You get uh, the cards, the valor cards that are uh, needed. You get the movement tools as well, and you get all the tokens. And there are a lot of tokens in this box. Plus, on top of that, you get a map of the world, the one, the map that I showed just before. So you get all this package for 60 pounds, all these miniatures, all these things. And yeah, that is a lot. Uh, this starter set is an amazing good deal. Like if you compare the prices uh, to just buying those uh, individually, like. They, there is no question. It is an absolute great point to start the game. And if you want to buy it twice, it's still uh, a good deal, actually. Like, you will have some rules and uh, tokens uh, too much. You would never have too many dices. But it's still a very good place to have a larger French fleet. And so, now that we see uh, the detail of everything, let's have a look more in detail what you want to build. First, you have this Oriflamme, which will be your flagship if you buy this box. First of all, it is really good at the center of your fleet. Uh, the miniature is amazing, as you can see here. I, I just love this style. And the thing to know is that it's not a battleship, despite being Mass 3. It is what they call a ground battle cruiser. Uh, it is a fancy name, but it, it does have uh, great firepower, but it is not that resilient. Uh, it has only armor 7, which is not good and Citadel 13, which is downright bad for a Mass 3. And it doesn't have that many hull points. However, for this, and it, it does cost 230 points, so you would you would think like uh, it must have something good, and yes it does. It has reinforced uh, water lines, which uh, makes it more resilient to torpedoes, always good to take. And especially it has protected gun crew, which uh, will allow you to keep shooting at full efficiency with your gun batteries and your heavy gun batteries and basically everything with the broadside 
or gunnery keyword, which includes your it lances and your it lancets at full capacity, uh, even if you are crippled. So that is very good because it will uh, attract some fire and the enemy will have to finish your oriflam off before it can uh, feel safe from it. It is good, thus you can use the Oriflam as a tanky ship, like absorbing the uh, rest of the opponent's firepower while your, uh, the rest of your ships move up the board. And uh, thus, yes, I would recommend, since it will attract so much firepower, to put either a shield generator in the rear or a shroud generator instead of this second battery if you take the default Oriflam. This would be my advice. And uh, this way you can just point the front towards the enemy and thanks to coordinated support all the forward facing firepower can link together into one big attack even if they don't have the same keyword. Uh, it has by default a heat lance in the front, these two small gun batteries here and also the torpedo turrets on the side can all link together and uh, you have your shroud in the back. This is really how I would play the Oriflam uh, with a generator in the back. Uh, the other two named variants are very good, but they cannot be customized and uh, the uh, incapacity to put a defensive generator in the rear is what uh, could be seen as a strength of the default unnamed Oriflam. Now that we've said this, there is also the Fesh, which is the common version, as I would say. It does not have a heat lance in the front, which is sad, but it gains focused gunnery which gives a few more dices on one of your gunnery attack, which is okay. And especially it allows you to reroll blanks on uh, your gunnery attacks. And this is huge because um, with coordinated support, your main attack will be gunnery and you will uh, gain reroll blanks on almost all of your firepower. Especially if you uh, link with a lot of Ecuillères, and uh, we will see those later, but it's those little frigates that you can attach to your Oriflam and they can shoot at the same time. If you do this, the Ecuillères as well will benefit from this rerolling of the blanks and you can really make one big devastating gunnery attack. The main particularity of the Fesh, however, are the command codes. This allows you, once per turn, to choose a unit within uh, 15 inches and when they start to roll, but before any other reroll happens, uh, you can say, okay, the roll was bad, I will just take everything and try again. And you can do this once per turn, which is very good. Uh, there is another uh, capacity which is command override, which is unlocked by some uh, list composition, but it's one per game, and this is once per turn, so it can really, really be good. And the Alliance really loves this because, as we've said, they like to put all their weapons together for one big attack, and for when you have so many dices all at once, uh, you get a lot of value for being able to reroll re all of this. And uh, yep, this is uh, the Fesh is actually a good good ship at 245 points, so you pay a little bit premium uh, compared to the Oriflam and you lose the heat lance. But uh, yeah, because of this, it, it is more ship that wants to be a little bit further in the back because its ideal, re ideal range is uh, closing. And uh, it, yeah, it just wants to stay in the back, gives its uh, common codes uh, left and right and just to shoot and do a lot of damage, so yeah, very good ship. And another very good ship in a different way is the Richelieu, which uh, costs even more at 251 points, and it doesn't get any uh, like uh, defensive benefit, so it's still as fragile as the normal uh, Oriflam. However, this is like the hit lance uh, version. It gets a hit lance in the front, two hit lance sets, and in the rear it gets a Solex generator, which gives sustained to the entire uh, ship on its uh, hit lances, and which means on every single weapon, because of course you will link everything together, including the torpedoes, uh, to give even more uh, dices to your big hit lance attack. It also gets focus gunnery, which is insane, because this huge dice pool that you will get with all your uh, hit lance and lance sets and all the support that you can uh, bring will also get the reroll of the blanks and with the solex it gets sustained so it is a very 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 reliable way to just obliterate a ship every turn uh, this ship likes also to be with Ecuillère which will really really boost its firepower at uh, closing range because usually hit lances are better at point blank but if you put four Ecuillère uh, it will also be extremely efficient at closing range uh, so this is a first way of playing it. Or you can put the Richelieu in strategic reserve, which will allow it, him to come uh, at the worst case at the end of the second turn, but on the side of the board. And it will 
of course be in point blank of something and it's a way to protect it until it gets in its, in its uh, ideal range. So th those are the two ways of playing the Richelieu. It is a very very fun uh, variant to play and uh, it will be very high on the list of priorities of your enemy to destroy. But if you manage to use it even at closing range with Forecuyer, it will pay itself back. Like it will just annihilate uh, something. And now that we have seen the flagships, let's have a look at the bread and butter. You get two French frontline cruisers and there are four variants. Uh, let's have a look first at the double uh, turrets variants. The first one is the Chevalier. This one is uh, very standard actually. It has uh, two torpedo turrets on, on top of its two heavy gun batteries. And uh, yeah, not much to say about him. It of course very much likes uh, coordinated support, so it can use its torpedo turrets to reinforce its heavy gun batteries. But this is true of basically almost every uh, Alliance ship, uh, especially the French ships. And it has, it has also protected gun crews, uh, which again will say that even if it is crippled, your Chevalier will still be a threat. And yeah, that is uh, very good and very important, because they can be crippled relatively soon. All the French ships uh, including the surface ones, are not that resilient. And uh, being able to keep shooting at full efficiency is really important. So yeah, the che Chevalier is very good. If you don't know what to build, having a Chevalier is never a bad idea. And then you have the Charlemagne, which is a heavier uh, variant of the cruiser. Uh, it is actually the most expensive surface cruiser that you can build. As you can see, it has a rear gun battery this very cute gun battery here and uh, it, it, it you could think like oh but i want to be forward facing with all my firepower why it's not very convenient that is not really true because uh, the charlemagne of course has a lot of forward facing firepower obviously but it also has heavy rolling broadsides which means it uh, should not be shy especially at point blank to show its flank to the enemy and then you can have the little gun battery also helping uh, and the very important rule for the Charlemagne that defines the unit is heavy firepower. This means that you can link up to three weapons to have uh, to use their lead value when they link together. Uh, what does that mean? It means that you really want to play the Charlemagne at least uh, two of them, like in a squadron, because this will allow you to link three heavy gun batteries together, and heavy gun batteries are weapons that really want to do that. And if you do that, you will have like battleship level of firepower on your Charlemagne. Like it's really going to be impressive. There are a few configurations. You can give them some hit lances. You can play a, a little bit around with it. But just having two Charlemagne with uh, heavy gun batteries, like all the classic things, and just using uh, heavy firepower uh, every turn on them will uh, make a very potent unit. The other two uh, ships that you can build are the Loire and the Picardy. The Loire is uh, quite interesting actually, it costs 90 points, so significantly less than the Chevalier, 70 points less. It loses a heavy gun battery, which is sad, but it gets Vanguard, and it is very fast, and it also gets Minesweeper. So this is the, a ship, the Loire, that really wants to be on the flank, or if there is a lot of mines in the center, it wants to be ahead of your main fleet so it can start cleaning around. And yeah, it is just a good fast ship for uh, going on the flanks and uh, getting objectives as soon as possible. Uh, it, it is invaluable if there is mines, and even without, it is good as objective grabber and flanker. Not my favorite ship, but I absolutely see the uh, utility of it. The one that I quite like, because uh, it does one thing and one thing good, is the Picardy. It uh, can be built, and this is how I would see it, as an artillery ship, because if you replace the heavy gun battery, which doesn't do much on its own, with a heavy magnetic bombard, which is an extreme range uh, weaponry, uh, you get a good artillery ship for 90 points uh, that will be able to link its heavy gun battery and its torpedo turrets and just keep shooting at extreme range. And uh, this will almost guarantee that you do a navigation lock on whatever you shoot at, because the heavy magnetic bombard plus the two torpedo turrets, uh, it's going to be hard for your enemy to intercept. And even better if you have two Picardy together, of course. Uh, one little trick with them is that uh, your heavy magnetic bombard cannot shoot at submerged units, unfortunately, even with uh, coordinated support. However, uh, the Picardy has Maritime Patrol rule, which will allow it to target uh, submarines with aerial weapons if the submarine that you target 
has some SRS token, some allied aircrafts uh, around it. So that is a good little trick and combo to, to think. And uh, if you can remove the submerged benefit of a submarine and you can target it with a Picardie, you are going to, for sure to do a lot of damage on your opponent because usually submarines have terrible defenses against aerial attacks and the heavy magnetic bombard is an aerial attack. Then let's have a look at the Levant cruisers, which are these beautiful, like amazing uh, flying uh, cruisers. I just love the model. We don't see the, the back on these pictures, but it really looks like a Star Destroyer, like the reactors in the rear, like it, it just looks so good on the table, even better than what you see here. So there are three variants. The Chasseur is the most default version, I would say. It uh, costs 127 points, so quite expensive already, uh, with a heavy rocket and three gun battery, so not even its most expensive uh, version. And it is relatively fragile. Like, I would say it's even more fragile than a Chevalier. So it is really a damage dealer. Uh, you don't want it to tank any shots. You want your other ships to do the tanking. And if you put the most expensive version of the Chasseur with the hit lances and lancets, as you see here in the pictures, it's going to go as high as 150 points for a single ship that can and will be one shot by a battleship uh, if you are not careful. However, uh, you do get a lot of damage for this. Uh, it is also very agile and you can. this is how you should play. It is skimming so you can hide behind an island and when you want to surge forward you have the option to become an aerial unit and gaining a lot of speed so that is always good. Uh, or you can just fly over an island and you don't really care about uh, about it. You just put your flying ship on it and you don't count as having the benefit of the cover of the island. But uh, yeah, you, you can really play with the terrain with those ships and that's what you should do. Another very good way of playing the Chasseur would be to make him come from strategic reserves, either with the generic faction battle fleet or with the specific Levant battle fleet, which uh, allows you to put uh, your ships in strategic reserve. Uh, this is not something that is available to you, the Levant battle fleet, with this box, because you will need a Levant flagship, which you don't have in the Alliance starter set. But if you do, very good way to play the Chasseur as well. Do note that the Chasseur can now be even good at uh, closing range, uh, thanks to uh, coordinated support, because you can have a single hit lance, for example, and then just support with all the gun batteries that uh, the Chasseur has by default. And this can allow you to do quite some damage at closing range. Something to keep in mind. Even though if I were you, uh, I would just try to find a way to make him come from strategic reserve one way or another and put all the hit lances and just have this big devastating ship that will do a lot of damage on turn two. Then we have the Furieux, which is a variant uh, of the Chasseur. It does not have the broadsides anymore on the side. Uh, and instead, instead, it has uh, the rule Legionnaire drop pods which allows you to do boarding actions a bit further away at six inches instead of four. And that is already good. Uh, you don't suffer from counter boarding uh, ever, even if you fail the assault really badly, which you should not because it has Frey 12. And it has Azardus on its boarding, so very good boarding ship. It also is good at protecting ships around. It gives a bubble of plus one defense and it can be attached to a Levant flagship if you ever buy a box, uh, which makes a very good combo. Uh, for example, you can buy a Magenta uh, Battle Fleet, as we will see later in how to expand. If you do this, having a Furieux is a really good option to uh, attach it to the Levant flagship and escort and just make one big attack. And uh, yeah, it's a very good combo. But even if you don't do this, having a Furieux uh, is never a bad idea, especially since it is a troop transport. Uh, which means that once the rules for the ground troops will be released, uh, the Furieux, which again is a Levant, so very, very fast and agile ship, uh, the Levant, um, the Furieux, sorry, will be able to just fly over an island, launch a lot of drop pods, and just put some ground uh, troops tokens on whichever objective you want to capture. So yeah, I'm really a big fan of the Furieux. It is more expensive than the Chasseur. Uh, that is true, but you gain a lot of utility from it very good option. Having one Furieux is always uh, a good option and I would recommend building at least one. And then you have the Voliere. Uh, the Voliere which is your only aircraft carrier in the uh, Alliance starter set. It is a nice looking ship. It is expensive at 134 points. Uh, that is absolutely true. 
and it is very very fragile and if it gets crippled which will happen fast like as soon as it starts to get some uh, any amount of dedicated firepower it will get crippled and as soon as this happens you divide the number of SRS tokens that you can send by two you go from four SRS to two SRS tokens and two is like <laughs> almost nothing for 134 points which is the price of the Furia right here uh, I'm not sure you would want a Voliere right now the Alliance has a lot of different ways to get some basic SRS token, which is what the Voliere provides. There are a lot of other carriers, uh, especially amongst the Italians, they do this quite good. And uh, even like other French uh, carriers, such as the upcoming Vauban or maybe the Couronne, uh, will have uh, some uh, good capacity for SRS tokens. And the Voliere just doesn't bring that much. Yes, it is uh, agile. But you don't want your volier to go slaloming between the enemy ships. Uh, you want it to stay in the back, stay hidden, and you pay a premium for being fra even more fragile. And uh, yeah, I, I just don't see uh, the point. You can uh, either keep it very cheap if you have one. Like it's not unplayable. It's just like not what I would recommend. Uh, if you keep the gun batteries, it stays very cheap. Cheap. Uh, or we can even put torpedo turrets and try to uh, get some torpedo attacks on top of your SRS tokens. Uh, if you do this, uh, though, be careful because it's not immune to torpedoes, which are the most common uh, extreme range uh, weapons. And yes, you will be able to shoot torpedoes, but others will also be able to shoot torpedoes at you. And uh, the uh, Voliev can be crippled in a single lucky torpedo salvo. So yeah, be careful about that. And then we have quite some uh, mass ones in the box. We have two French submarines and four Ecuyer frigates. I forgot to write it in the title. But yeah, you get two submarines and four frigates. The submarines can be built in two different ways. You can build the Sirene or the Epolar. Let's start with the Sirene because it's the easiest to uh, understand. It has a little heat lancet on the top and that's it. It is very fragile at 40 points. It has armor 4, still 10 and 3 uh, hull points. Uh, the Siren will die fast uh, if your opponent can start to shoot at it. Uh, it is submerged, so it counts as being obscured against most weapon. But yeah, uh, still like anything, any broadside, uh, any torpedo salvo, like there are many things that can obliterate your Siren. However, what you can do, and uh, you cannot do it with this uh, Alliance starter set, but if you do get the Levant Battlefleet that we were talking earlier, uh, you can put one uh, pack of sirene in reserve and uh, just throw it at the enemy and uh, at the end of the second turn thanks to strategic reserve and there is not much counterplay that your opponent can do. He will try of course uh, to focus your sirene uh, during the third turn but uh, if you play nicely and conservatively with your sirene which you should do even if they come from strategic reserve uh, then you will be able to activate them a second time, and if they activate two times, they for sure paid for themselves. Uh, if you activate them once, uh, it's a good trade unit. If you activate them twice, they really, really paid for themselves. Because yeah, hit lances are really good. Having two or four hit lances coming from a flank on a, an expensive, okay, but 40 points is not that expensive, on an expensive but good platform as the Siren is still a good deal. Do note that if you buy the Magenta Battlefleet, for example, because you want your Levant uh, Battlefleet bonus and you want the Magenta, etc., uh, you will get another two submarines, so you will be able to make four Sirene, which is the maximum squad size. And yeah, four Sirene coming from the side alongside a whole fleet of Levant uh, ships is no joke. The other submarine that you can build, and this is what I would recommend if uh, you don't plan on buying more boxes uh, for the Alliance yet, is the Epolar. Uh, those have a small magnetic bombard, they cost 37 points, they have the same defensive profile as the Sirene, which means uh, they are terrible at surviving, uh, but they can shoot at extreme range, and this is how they try to survive. They uh, cost more than the... Uh, Oh, sorry, they cost less than the artillery Picardy that we talked about earlier. Uh, they have more firepower per point, obviously, thus. Uh, but yeah, they die much, much faster than a Picardy. They are quite 
good though I like them as a cheap activation two or three Epoda is always good like way back in the rear because they will not be high on your opponent's uh, target priority list and they can do some work magnetic bombards especially when you start to pile them up uh, they are no joke and they can put a navigation lock when it's annoying uh, especially if you can put some SRS token so for example if you have a Volière or if you have any other source of SRS token you can trigger spotter for those because if they shoot at a unit that already has some SRS token they can either uh, ignore them being obscured um, or they can uh, reroll blanks against this opponent so yeah good little artillery uh, units and if you don't have a good solid plan for the siren I would recommend to play them as a polar those are very small uh, turrets, by the way, and this is true for all ships. Uh, don't glue your uh, your turrets. You can just switch from one to the other easily, or you can magnetize them even better. But yeah, usually this is the, the this is the way. This is the best practice. And then finally, last mass one that you get are the Equier. The Equier, I love them. They are adorable. I just love this model, and they do so much. They cost only 25 points uh, per model, which is very cheap. Uh, they don't have any crazy profile, they have a light uh, rolling broadside, which is... Eh, you will uh, not do uh, so much damage with it. They have a small gun battery, yay. But this is not uh, what you want them. You don't want to make a big pack of Equier, like six of those, and have them on a flank. That's absolutely not how I would see them. It can work, but it's not the best way to use them. The best way to use them, and the most fluffy way, would be to attach them to a unit and... Uh, any unit they can be attached with Equier, not only flagships and uh, this way they will really boost uh, the defense of the unit that they are attached to because they have the corvette duty rule which means that if you attach four Equier to a flagship it will be plus five to the defense it starts to be significant and also the gun batteries can link thanks to coordinated support they can link with basically any weapon uh, of course with heavy gun batteries no problem but they can also link and this is where it starts to be interesting with heat lances allowing to really boost the firepower of the heat lance for cheap and this is really how i would play the equier as a good defense boost and as a using their gun batteries uh, to coordinate uh, to coordinatingly support the main attack of the main unit uh, i would recommend to attach them either to an oriflam uh, any variant the normal Oriflam, the Fesh, the Richelieu, any of them really enjoy having uh, a squadron of Equier. Or if you build uh, what we said, uh, like a squadron of two Charlemagne for heavy firepower, if you put on top of this four Equier attached to the squadron of Charlemagne, well, first of all, it's going to look amazing on the table. And second of all, there's going to be one powerful uh, gunnery attack that you will do. And now that we've seen like the different options, let's see. Uh, some examples of list. I made sure that those are lists that you can build uh, with uh, all the miniatures in the box. I didn't include anything from what you can build later. Of course, as we've said, there are many ways to expand beyond this, either with other nations, we'll talk about this in a moment, uh, or with, for example, more French uh, Levant ships, like a Magenta Battle Fleet. But here, those three lists, you can build with the Alliance start set. First, I wanted to make an easy to, easy to pilot uh, list. If it's your first uh, game of Dystopian Wars and you want to kind of like learn how it's played, uh, this is a good way. And it's still not a bad uh, list at all. Uh, it is a basic Oriflam, nothing special, like just all the basic uh, gun batteries, uh, the heat lance in the front, everything basic, plus four Equier attached. So this is going to be a very good damage dealer and a good centerpiece for your fleet. Also here, two Chevaliers, like a squadron of two, but you can also uh, spread out into two units of one, works as well. Uh, those are your bread and butter, they will just uh, engage uh, the enemy in the middle of the map and uh, will do their job good. Uh, here you have one Chasseur, uh, to whom I paid the heavy gun battery upgrade instead of the heavy rocket battery. This way, this chasseur wants to be a little bit uh, flanker, like to stay on the flank, to be agile. And it is quite fast and agile, so it might probably want to hunt the enemies that stay in the back of their fleet. And with its heavy gun batteries, it can link everything in one very good uh, gunnery attack. And finally, two Epolar that I left, like that you should play all the way in the back as a cheap activation. 
um, during the first uh, turn, usually the first activation, we try to not uh, play first because we want the enemy to get closer. This allows you to have a cheap uh, activation that will do something because uh, it will be at extreme range, it can shoot very far, and it allows you to already start to do some damage on the enemy. This is 750 points on the nose, and it's very good for first uh, practice game to learn a little bit how movement goes, how uh, you can link weapons, etc, etc. Very good and fun list to play. Then, if you want to really show them what an elite uh, French force can be, you can have this. First, the Fesh all alone for 245 points, giving command uh, code around and just being a good ship uh, all around. It will want to give its uh, command code to this big pack, like these big units of two Charlemagne and four Ecuyer. They will make one big attack with heavy gun batteries at closing or point blank with everything, using command codes, using the Ecuyer to support, using all their weapons, and of course heavy firepower as we said. And I paid them one heavy magnetic bombard uh, why did I do this? Because this way, on the first turn, uh, you will not be at closing range of uh, anything, and this will allow you to have one good uh, shot of heavy magnetic bombard, that's already nine dices, that you can then support with all the torpedo turrets of both Charlemagne, to make still with this one big attack on turn one at extreme range, uh, that will be able to shoot basically uh, anything, and still enjoy the benefits of the command code of the fish. And then one chasseur to whom we paid all the updates, like it has all the hit lance sets and the hit lance in the middle. And this should be uh, going uh, hidden on the flank uh, behind terrain as much as possible. So you can just uh, take the, uh, like, let your Charlemagne and Fesh attract the enemy. And then the chasseur can be a very, very efficient counter punch. Just keep it hidden. And then when the enemy is close, make it fly, uh, because make it become aerial and then just get to point blank of something and obliterate them with the, all the powers of the heat lances. And finally, this is for a little bit uh, later in the game, like if you start to buy other boxes, other nations, like Italians or Suza, etc., and you want to use this Alliance starter set ships uh, still, this is a very good way to do it. This is just a little bit shy of 1000 points, and the idea of this is that it will be part of an Alliance uh, faction battle fleet, which gives you the bonus of strategic reserve if it is your second battle fleet. So this list on the right implies that you already have a first uh, half of your list that will be on the table, maybe some Italian, maybe some other French, etc. that will be on the table, and all this list will be in reserve. And damn, <laughs> will it punch hard. Uh, first of all, there is going to be the Richelieu, to whom we give four Ecuyer and one Escort token. <laughs> to really like insist that this is gonna this is gonna hurt. Uh, what can I say except that the thing that will be targeted by this Richelieu will just die. Like you can even try to board it after with uh, with everything, and uh, yeah, this is going to be one very very powerful activation. You will also have a squadron of two chevaliers. Like the, here, we don't have a choice. It has to be two chevaliers together. Uh, <laughs> I pay them four hit lances, so that uh, the flank where they will arrive like on top of the Richelieu will be uh, evaporated and as well two chasseurs again with all the heat lances and everything for 300 points and on top of that two sirenes so these small submarines with heat lance sets. Uh, if you do this uh, probably you want to play this at a 2000 points uh, game and uh, yeah, your enemy will not have many ways to protect himself uh, from this at the end of the second turn. Of course, the first turn you will play very defensively. And when this will arrive, like, they will arrive on one flank and they will just obliterate everything. Like, it doesn't matter what your enemy has. If he has large battleships, if he, ha if he has, I don't know, the Ice Maiden or uh, a Muromansk, a Tobolsk, like, no matter. Anything your enemy has, this uh, reserve force will come and just obliterate it. No questions asked. And yeah, it will be very fun, and it's still using almost all the models. But no, actually, every single model of the Alliance starter sets is used here. So yeah, very good way to use it. And now the big question, how to expand? Like, okay, you have the Alliance starter set, you're very happy, uh, but you're like, okay, I enjoy their gameplay, I love the models, and you're very right, the models are amazing. Uh, how can I expand? The, my first recommendation would be to buy the Magenta Battlefleet set. I've talked about it quite a few times. This will give you a Levant uh, flagship, which will unlock the Levant Battlefleet uh, bonus, uh, which is strategic reserve, very important. Plus the Magenta is such a cool model as you can see here. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, it's, it's a good box. You get this Magenta Battle Cruiser, which is this uh, battleship version, or you can build it as a Levant aircraft carrier, which is the Saint Michel, which is a better source of SRS token than uh, the Volière, because the Saint Michel, uh, even though it is also fragile, also expensive, uh, it does come with Fortunes of War, which is a very, very important rule to have at least somewhere uh, in your army. So, yeah, much better way to use your SRS token uh, from this. And you will also get two more Levant cruisers, which you can use to build more Chasseurs or Furieux, uh, as you prefer. I think having one or two Furieux and one or, uh, like one or two Chasseurs is always going to be very good. Even like two Chasseurs, two Furieux is how I would build it if you were to, to follow my advice. You also get two more French submarines. Again, if you want to make this big pack of four Sirenes, for some strategic reserve, this is the way to do it. And you will get uh, two more SRS tokens, so four in total, which is good, like more SRS token is very good. You can pile the SRS token to say how many they are, but I just prefer to put like just all of them next to each other, uh, so they look uh, cooler on the table. So yeah, the Magenta Battle Fleet set, very, very good uh, way to expand. And if you want to continue with the French force, this is a very good complement, especially if you like those uh, beautiful Levant ships. Another way to expand, and a really good one, would be the Mars Battlefleet set. Um, this, uh, we don't know the details yet, we just know that they are coming soon. Uh, maybe by the time this video is released, uh, it has been announced already, I don't know the date yet, but it has been said that it should be soon. And uh, yeah, if it is like every single uh, Battlefleet set uh, ever in this format, it should be one battleship, two frontline cruisers and four frigates. Uh, let's uh, go on this uh, ID. The Mars itself, this big battleship that you see here, is a tough frontline ship. Like we did say for a while, you don't want uh, the enemy to shoot at your French ships. Uh, the Mars, he doesn't, doesn't mind. Like he can be in the middle of the, uh, of the enemy fleet, start shooting everywhere with heavy firepower, torpedoes. It's programmed to do some very powerful ramming action. This is what you want in the middle of the table to hold the line and take the hit. Very good ship. Uh, then you get two front, uh, Italian frontline cruisers, which uh, are can be built in a many many ways. But for example, they have very good flanking ships in the auxilia, which can go on the flank very fast. Or they have the spatha, which is very good. Like if you very good heavy cruiser that you can just put in the middle, and all by itself it can do a lot of work. Unlike the Charlemagne of the French that want to be by two at the minimum, maybe B three. The Spatha can be a very good single unit to just hold the line alongside the Mars. And then you get uh, four of those Italian frigates that we can see in the artwork. Uh, those are really good. They have flag barrage, actually, which is very good on small uh, frigates. Because as we've seen, the SRS game is not amazing along uh, in the Alliance in general. So having flag barrage is really good. You can use them uh, in the middle of the board as well, just behind your big Mars and uh, Italian frontline cruisers, or you can use them on the flank, far away from the enemy, where the only thing that you can send on them is SRS token, against which they will have flag barrage. So very good box that complements really well the French in the sense that they are made to hold the center. And talking about holding the center, the third options to uh, expand would be the Colombia Battlefleet set. Those are South American ships. In the fluff, they are uh, ships from the Confederates that left uh, um, uh, the United States after the Civil War, which is called the Or War in this uh, dystopian age. Uh, and uh, yeah, they, uh, they left for South America and they've been fighting for the Socialist U Union ever since. Uh, in terms of gameplay, you have the Columbia heavy battleship in the middle that can be so tough. Like if you want one ship in the Alliance to hold the center, it will be this Columbia. I will, uh, if you want to know more about the very defensive Columbia that you can build, I would point you at the deep dive Alliance uh, orbit review that we made. But to make it short, you put a Columbia, you put a shroud generator in the back, you give him four Springfield Corvettes, which are basically the same, uh, it's the same concept as the Equia frigates, they boost the defense. So you put four Equi uh, Springfield Corvettes, and you also get four escort tokens, those uh, little ships here, that can even boost further the defense. And then you have this big pack of nine ships that moves in one activation, that is very powerful, that is tanky as hell, because it's gonna be shrouded, it's gonna have 
plus 12 to its defense, and it's gonna, it is at Citadel 17, I mean, wow. And yeah, this is the ship that you want uh, in the center to just absorb all the firepower of your opponent. And you also get two uh, Aurora cruisers, those cruisers here. There are a few ways to build them, uh, especially a very cool uh, version called the Saratoga, which has heavy gun batteries and can send helicopters full of troops to make boardings at long range. A very cool, very, like, the narrative of it is amazing and it just looks good. And for this, you get two Talon Autogyros tokens, which are these big helicopters that can be uh, used uh, to. Uh, to attack uh, around. Also, I think this is a good box uh, to expand because if you don't have any Union uh, fleet yet, this could be a very good first step into the Union because the Union, which is basically like uh, the United States, uh, can use those ships as well. So um, it is a good way to start to dip into this faction and see if you like the gameplay and everything. And if you do and you start to buy, uh, buy your Union ships, uh, then, yeah, it, it is going to be useful to have a Colombia anyway, uh, either for the Alliance, either for the Union. And this is going to be it for this uh, how to start uh, the Alliance. I hope that uh, you enjoyed the video and that it was useful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and uh, let us know in the comment what did you think about it. Uh, do you plan on starting the Alliance? Do you play the Alliance already? And uh, how do you plan on building your fleet? I'm very curious to know uh, what are your ideas about this alliance? Uh, I really love this faction uh, because as you might have guessed from the accent, I am French. So this is kind of like my the faction of my heart. And uh, yeah, just the models are so good. Uh, I might not be objective, but for me, they are amongst the best looking models of uh, the entire Dystopian Wars game. And uh, yeah, they, they play really fun. They used to be very weak, their new orbit made them at the same level as the other factions, and they are just so much fun to play. There it is, uh, if you have any questions, uh, also uh, you want some more list, you want some precision, some uh, anything, let us know in the comments and uh, I will answer it as fast as I can. And uh, that is going to be it, until the next time, take care of yourself, and please remember to keep spreading the love all around you. Bye!